we hope thank you for whoever clicked the recording uh mike probably um and hope that everyone is here for the alpine pre-competition webinar for winter games uh, my name is steve bennett uh, senior director here at special mix maryland i'm just going to do a couple of the opening slides and then turn it over to elizabeth kathy and matt our alpine um, leaders um, one thing i do want to note i think everyone's aware of this but um Although Elizabeth has done all of the pre-planning with Matt and Kathy, Jared, and the rest of the Alpine team, um, as a reminder, she will not be physically at Winter Games. Um, she will be out celebrating her recent marriage on her honeymoon. So um, we do have, um, along with myself, as I mentioned, Matt Otwell and Kathy Cowdery, who are our Alpine leaders from the management team. Uh, Mike Sarnowski, our VP of Sports. And Elizabeth, our sports director that had been overseeing Alpine and, and may have a one or two more days left. Um, and then um, we've also have Melissa Anger joining us, um, as I think most of you should be familiar with her, with her many roles here as a sports director with Special Mix Maryland. Um, but she will be stepping in to support uh, Matt and Kathy, Jarrett, and the rest of the Alpine crew um, during the games if there's anything that comes up. So... Um, with that said, we'll go ahead and get started. I'll do a couple of the first slides and then hand it over, as I mentioned. So we'll go ahead to the next one. So this is the agenda we'll cover tonight. It's, uh, again, welcome. Uh, we hope that everyone has had some time to get on the snow at the On Snow trainings and are doing some um, uh, dry land training as well, preparing everyone for the Winter Games. Uh, we'll talk about um, just a brief mention of COVID, um, some games updates the schedule the general schedule as well as get into some alpine specifics later on um talk about the escorting of the athletes and partners to the um, courses as well as the maps and layouts reminder of the helmet check um the, get into the rules and specifics of alpine uh, give a little brief update about families and spectators and then address the uh weather and attire and see if there's any questions at that point um, as you saw that this this webinar is being recorded, so we will post this on the coaches resource page, um, hopefully by the end of the day tomorrow, if not sooner, and also send you out the slide deck as a reference as well. But a reminder to uh, continue to check our coaches resource page on our uh, Special Mix Maryland website as we continue to update things there leading to winter games. So again, purpose of tonight, I'm going to get into this. It's basically a sharing of information and highlight some key changes and give you information so that you can pass it along to your other fellow Alpine uh, members of your delegation. So just a reminder, COVID protocol, Special Mix Maryland, um, a while ago since uh, this past, well, last year's spring, I should say, um, we follow the uh, protocols and restrictions of the state of Maryland any local jurisdictions, um, including county governments, et cetera, as well as any host facilities or host venues. Um, so as of today, um, there are no um, restrictions um, that we are following, or not that we're following, that have been in, in place uh, due to COVID. So um, no masks are required, although if you feel you would like to wear one, by all means, that's your choice. Um, otherwise, we are good to go there. So just a, a few updates and reminders here. Again, hopefully it's not news to anyone on the call here that the Winter Games are at WISP. Um, again, we're excited to return to McHenry and back in Maryland for our Winter Games. And we um, love our continued partnership with Whitetail, providing on-snow training and other support throughout the winter season. Um, the time trials will be on Sunday, so it's not a separate event as it has been in uh, several years ago. Uh, time trials were conducted before winter games but we brought all that back in uh, the last winter games and moving forward uh, that will continue to be the process so um the first day sunday is the time trials then tuesday or monday and tuesday will be the finals so we'll talk about the um uh, time trials and how they're scheduled there's a, a a slide later on in here that talks about uh, which counties and which times based on their levels uh, that those time trials will be conducted. Um, one of the things is delegations and coaches, you can check in at the control center and in, uh, in the lobby there, depending, um, starting on Sunday at 10 a.m. And uh, in that there will be your credentials, 
um, lift tickets um, and um, bibs, et cetera. So reminder that the bibs will be used for the entire event. Um, so just make sure you keep up with those and uh, make sure the proper athletes or partners have the proper bib number there. Um, the opening ceremony. Uh, well, one thing with registration, just be prepared that the keys for your hotel rooms and especially for you guys with Alpine, the keys for the lockers may not be, and I will almost guarantee they won't be available that early. Uh, that'll be later on in the afternoon. So um, just be prepared for that. Um, the opening ceremony will be in the at WISP at the McHenry Lodge. It's basically attached to the hotel, if you will, um, down the hallway. And it's the big uh, A-frame building we'll show you on the map here in a little bit. But that's also where all the meals will take place. One thing, uh, we mentioned it to the heads of delegation the other night, um, with the tickets for the lifts and to access the lifts and get through the gates, et cetera, it's an RFID card. So it's kind of one of those scanner cards that you'll need to place on your left side of your body above your waist and keep that away from any cell phones or magnetic devices or anything else, um, kind of like a, a typical credit card or whatever else. But um, really important. Um, it looks like as if, well, it looks as if you will have one for Sunday for time trials and then an additional card given to you for both Monday and Tuesday. So just want everyone to be aware of that. Again, the left side of your body, above your waist, that's where the scan will read it and then let you into the gates to get on the lifts. Um, so um, that's about there. We, we have just completed the event guide. It was sent out to the heads of delegation. Um, again, hoping to get that posted by the end of the day tomorrow on the coaches resource page. Um, it's just a lot more detailed information um, but we'll go over most everything you need to know today. So here's the basic map. If you don't know how to get to WISP, Google it. <laughs> um, but for most of us, you, you come up 70, um, head to 68, and then take 219 down to WISP and follow the, the, the signs, or as I do, follow my GPS. And this is just more of a, a version here. Um, of the layout of the facility. And we'll talk about the slopes. The slopes are identified on this map, um, but there's another one a little bit later that that hits on this where I'll let Matt and Kathy or Elizabeth uh, talk more about the slopes that will be utilized. But if you see the brown uh, box kind of center left of this diagram, that's where the conference rooms are. Yep, thank you, Elizabeth. Those are the conference rooms as well as the lodge and hotel. To the left of that, I mean, yeah, right over there, that's the McHenry Lodge. That's where all the meals will take place and the opening ceremony, the dance and all that kind of stuff. Um, so just to the left of that, you'll see the snowshoeing competition. So it's really gonna be conducive for everybody to see a lot of the competitions. Um, if you have a little bit of off time for Alpine, you, you have a great uh, view of the snowshoeing course to cheer on your fellow athletes and competitors. Um, from that point as well. So again, we will hit the slopes a little bit later. I'll let Matt and Kathy um, hit on that, but this is just a general overview of the location there at WISP. This is kind of a blown up version, if you will. We talked about the McHenry Lodge, the bottom right-hand part of your screen. That's where the opening ceremony, the athlete dance or the social and the awards will take place as well. Um, so when you come in for awards, you'll enter to the right of that building on this slide, come right in, yep, right there, and it'll be up against the bottom part of that building um, under the big windows for the awards area. But your staging and everything will take place right inside those doors. Um, and you can, there's ski racks and stuff like that outside on the deck where you could uh, drop your skis off there. Um, moving up to the uh, top left of this diagram, the first floor. Um, of the main hotel. That's where um, you'll walk in. That's where the control center will be on the Barnes room. And then in the lobby area as well, there'll be some check-in early in the morning on Sunday. Uh, we lifted a, listed a couple of the other additional rooms there. Um, the main entrance of the hotel, if you see, you'll come in there and it's to the left. You'll enter right in through there. That's where the drop-off is. 
but there's parking um, all around, but just be familiar with um, how to access the hotel portion, get checked in and then move on from there. So we talked about the registration again in the control center in the Barnes room, as well as in the lobby of the hotel. Uh, we talked about the times there on Sunday around 10 to three, knowing that there'll be uh, delegations arriving throughout the day, depending on your time trial schedule. Um, there's going to be three packets per delegation. So one will be for the head of delegation, and then there'll be one for each coach, each head coach for those two sporting events or competitions for one for Alpine, one for snowshoeing. Um, so work with your head of delegation um, to see if they're going to pick up your packet and give it to you, or if they're going to have you pick it up yourself. Um, so again, within that will be your lift scan cards, if you will, um, your credentials, bib, bib, competition bibs, et cetera. Um, and any updates or whatever, we can let you know upon check-in there. Um, the one thing we do ask is if, if you're aware of any scratches, you let us know upon check-in if you haven't already. Um, regarding scratches, as far as any fees associated with those, Anyone who has turned in, any of the scratches turned in by noon today um, were eliminated from any um, fees. Uh, but after this point, anybody who scratches, it's unfortunate, number one, that they can't compete. And then um, secondly, that we've already been obligated uh, for their housing and meals and everything else. So there will be no refunds or a waiving of the registration fees from this point forward. Um, if you do have any, Again, the sooner the better, because uh, it affects divisioning and all kinds of other uh, implications. Uh, you can send those to Mike Sarnowski. His email is there at the bottom of the page. And obviously for snowshoeing, Ryan. And for alpine skiing, as I mentioned earlier, Elizabeth and Melissa Anger uh, to make sure we've got everything covered. Again, with Elizabeth heading out on her honeymoon, uh, we want to make sure that we don't miss anything. So the check-in process, we just talked about that. Um, one of the things we do ask is, you know, coaches are mostly heads of delegation, but coaches are more than welcome to check in in the control center each morning just to see if there's any anything crazy happened overnight um, or just check in and say, hey, anything new? Okay, good to go. Um, so Monday and Tuesday around eight o'clock would be a good point to check in at the control center. Um, as we talked about, the DIS will be distributed on Sunday. Um, the parking, um, it's not as problematic at WISP as it had been, it, depending on where you parked at Whitetail, uh, but just please obey the parking signs and the parking attendants um, and park in an appropriate spot or designated spot. If you do tend to park somewhere where you're not allowed, that's on you. We're not going to be uh, uh, reimbursing anybody for uh, being towed away or a ticket or anything like that. So just be mindful of the parking areas. There's plenty of room, especially on Monday and Tuesday. So with that, um, I'm going to hand this over to Elizabeth or Matt or Kathy, whoever wants to take on some more of the um, time trial specific and schedules there. I can take it over. Um, so for um, the time trials, the numbers are just the amount of uh, projected athletes. It's nothing um, to be concerned about, um, but just kind of based on who's coming the furthest versus who's the closest, we kind of did it based on that. Um, so you can see kind of where your county is and the general time frame of when they're going to be going to do the intermediate and advanced time trials, as well as the novice um, time trials. For glide and super glide, all of those time trials will be um, on Monday at around 11 a.m. for both the glide and super glide. And then the um, uh, finals will be Monday afternoon and I believe Tuesday morning, uh, respectively. So um, we are still working on kind of finalizing the uh, competition schedule. But if we have it done in time that we send out the slide deck, I will be sure to send it out with that as well. Um, here is a tentative schedule, so you can see kind of some stuff that was already discussed, the delegation registration in the Barnes room, um, the snowshoeing practice session, and the volunteer registration, all of that. Um, the main thing is, of course, the Alpine time trials, and that uh, 
you're doing it at your time stated on the previous slide. And then dinner um, from 4.45 to about 6.15. This one will be in shifts. Um, so if you are a, one of those delegations that has the earlier time slot, please try to go to dinner at around 4.45 so that we are um, able to kind of flip some of the room for opening ceremonies. We're using the same space in McHenry um, for both dinner and opening ceremonies Sunday night. So if you have one of those earlier time slots for time trials, please be on the earlier side for dinner so that we can get that room flipped and ready for opening ceremonies. Elizabeth, the clarification on that, uh, they'll be assigned a time. Okay. They'll either Perfect. be in a shift that starts at 4.45 or a shift that starts at 5.30. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, that, that, and a lot of that is to avoid or to minimize a really long line at the, uh, um, uh, as people are coming in to get their food. With that, if you are one of the earlier ones, try to move things along so that the next shift can come and, um, get started again so we can flip the room. Um, after dinner, there is a Garrett, the Garrett County Chamber of Commerce is really excited to have us back. So they're having a welcome back reception um, in the McHenry Lodge. And then they will, that'll go directly into opening ceremonies. The uh, Chamber of Commerce, I believe is gonna be a part of opening ceremonies and a few other things. Um, tentatively afterwards, we will have a coaches meeting as well as an HRD meeting. Um, after, depending on the time that uh, opening ceremonies end. So that's uh, listed on another slide. Similarly, um, kind of focusing on the Alpine competition here um, from the 10 a.m. to 4.30, uh, distribution of competition schedules at 8.45 and uh, delegation breakfast. All the meals are gonna be in McHenry Lodge. And um, going from there, with Monday, we do have the dance and social in the McHenry Lodge as well. And then finally on um, Tuesday with the Alpine from 10 a.m. to 2.30, again, we're just kind of finishing off those final things um, with the Alpine specific schedule and we can send that out as soon as it is finalized. Uh, with the time trials, the athletes and partners have been registered in the time trials and events that match their competitive events for winter games. Um, you will have the opportunity as coaches to adjust the competitive events following time trials based on the individual's performance at those time trials. Must have completed the proper time trial um, for the changed event. And those must be submitted no later than 5.15 p.m. on Sunday. So um, that part at the bottom is really important. Okay, uh, just one clarification also, or, or for, so folks are aware, if you do have someone who you think is gonna need to shift from intermediate down to novice, remember from that previous slide, and you'll get this deck, there is a limited window when the novice course is going to be open. So if you think there's somebody who's in that situation, be sure to get them through the time trial there. Even if they don't, they're not assigned to it. Matt and Kathy and Garrett's crew can handle them. Uh, but once they shut that novice trial or novice course down, the chance to have somebody do that time trial is gone. So uh, pay pay pretty close attention to that. Yeah, we do only have about 10 to 15 athletes in novice time trials at the moment. So it's not the same kind of all day time frame like the um, intermediate and advanced. Um, so the head coaches meeting um, for Sunday, approximately 9 p.m. Um, or following opening ceremonies in the Morris or Crawford rooms. Um, you'll get familiar with kind of where those rooms are, but it's going to be similarly to where the control center is, um, right in that main, just off that main lobby area. Um, and just a quick 15 minutes, making sure everyone's on the same page for the following day. Um, we'll go, I'll show you on a map again. Um, Glide Super Glide is going to be on the Sunset Boulevard Learning Center. Um, the two, um, using the two magic carpets that are kind of parallel to the lodge. 
Super G is going to be on Wisp Trail, and I'll show you exactly where it's going to be kind of a little bit further. Um, it's going to be a majority of the course, but it won't start right at the top. The intermediate and advanced um, time trials is Roadrunner. Um, intermediate race will be Muskrat, um, which is actually, it appears to be the only race that will have um, no visibility from the base of the mountain. Everything else does appear to have at least some visibility at the final um, finish, the way that we're projecting it right now, that it will be able to be seen by spectators at the base. Um, advance is going to be squirrel cage. And again, on the map, I'll show you kind of where we're projecting the course to go on squirrel cage. It's not going to be the entirety of the run. And then novice, we are moving to um, possum, um, which is a longer trail for our novice, um, for novice skiers. Um, but we want to get them on the chairs and down. So as coaches with the staging, please keep in mind the um, endurance of your athletes and getting them down to the start. It's going to be at the bottom of the trail. It's a very easy trail um, to ski uh, from what skiers have told me. Um, but I'll show you exactly kind of where you'll be taking them. And if you um, if you're able to get them there prior to the time trials, just kind of get an idea of their endurance, getting to the start line um, and the staging area. And their um, time trials will be on um, will be on, on possum. So you'll be able to get an idea. So let me get my mouse. Here we go. Um, so glide super glide is going to be these two carpets here that are again kind of parallel to the um, the lodge. So for possum um, and matter, Kathy, correct me if I'm wrong at any point. Um, we're going to be kind of using this bottom section of possum. So it is a very long trail, but it's a very easy trail. Um, the race course is really going to be set here, um, kind of where these trees open up. For what, um, for the Super G course, it's going to be starting kind of just below Longview um, and down this way for... Um, Advanced slalom with squirrel cage. We're going to be kind of down where deer run lets out is kind of where the course is going to be starting right about there. And then muskrat is up here at the top. Um, the course will only be on muskrat and then the skiers will run down, will ski down Boulder Run to get back onto chair one, which we've talked to Wisp and they will be running um, that day. And again, just for reference, the lodge is here with awards here and snowshoeing just to the um, left of this perspective of, um, of the venue. Um, the, for the lift tickets and for the lift and um, rentals, the chairlifts will begin operating at approximately 8 a.m. on Monday and Tuesday for the management team to set courses and for course inspection. Um, there'll be the lift cards for each individual. Then again, just like Steve said, left side above the waist um, and similar to kind of a hotel um, key, you want to keep it away from magnetic devices and cell phones as much as possible so that it doesn't uh, mess with the scanning capabilities. Um, the escort. So coaches or parents can escort the athletes to the staging area at the top of the race course. Then staging volunteers will check in each athlete and partner. At the scheduled competition time, that's that volunteer send the athlete to the race course for the first run. And then the coach escorts will go to the bottom of the race course to wait for those athletes and um, back to the staging area for the second run for those um, races that uh, get both or you opt for both. Um, then after the second run, the coach's partners escort them to the awards area move the skis and poles. As Steve mentioned, there is a place to put the skis um, right outside the McHenry Lodge and then uh, we'll be taken into the awards staging area and um, enjoy the awards presentation. Reminder, um, you may speak with the competitors and kind of coach them, settle them down a little bit as needed um, while escorting them to the staging area. Uh, but once they enter the race course, no coaching is allowed um, during the competition while the competitor is within the boundaries of the race course. 
only general cheering or encouragement, any specific help or directions during the competition while the competitors within the boundaries may lead to disqualification. So the helmet process, um, the helmets are required, uh, the proper RH2013 certified helmet for any skiers on the giant slalom or super G courses, no exceptions. Uh, that's for the start of course inspections, warm ups, anything. Everyone going through that course must have the proper helmet and must be inspected and stickered. Um, a lot of athletes did bring helmets to um, myself and Steve on snow, and we um, updated them. I've attached the sticker here. So it's this silver sticker. It's uh, larger than a quarter, probably around the size of a uh, half dollar. Um, under county, we do write your delegations kind of abbreviation. So if a helmet goes missing, we're going to find the head of delegation or uh, alpine coach for that delegation and return it to them. And then from there, figuring out which athlete it belongs to. Um, we are moving away from the green stickers. We found that they are not the most waterproof, which is kind of important for skiing. Um, so if you still have the green sticker, we do want to double that up with the silver sticker seen here. Um, so we want to make sure every athlete's going to need that silver sticker to go through the course. Just uh, keep that in mind. Go back to the coaching. Um, coaching during competition, it's contra contrary to the goals, um, provides the unfair advantage to athletes and partners who are competing in their own events individually. Not allowed by any coach, spectator, family member, or non-competing athlete or partner. Coaching is prohibited in the start area and while the athlete and partner is on the competition course. So especially with a lot of the finish lines of the courses being visible and possibly being an earshot of a um, spectator that may not have been able to see it in the past, please relay that message to any spectators that may be able to yell to that finish line and um, you're communicating that. We wanna make sure that that is um, not causing the athlete disqualification. Um, so what is coaching? Any assistance or actions, um, just no direction with where to put the skis or the poles. Um, actions like skiing or running alongside the course to help the athlete across the finish line. The main purpose is to provide fair competition. General cheering and encouragement is not considered coaching. Want to keep it kind of general so nobody can misconstrue it as coaching or an advantage. Uh, again, it can lead to disqualification. It's in the official's judgment. Um, if they received assistance from coaching, the athlete or partner is DQ'd from the race and um, will receive a participation ribbon. The person who did the coaching, if the race officials can identify the person who did the coaching for the first offense, they'll be required to leave the race course for the duration of the event. And the second offense will be ejection from winter games. This includes athletes, partners, and family members as well as coaches. So, Coaches are strongly requested to ensure all athletes and partners are not DQ'd by a member of their delegation or family members, providing coaching while an athlete or partner is competing. So please, again, communicate that to all parents, athletes, supporters, anyone in the delegation to ensure we have as we don't have any um, athletes DQ'd for coaching. For the awards and results information, delegations need to have someone dedicated to the awards area for meeting athletes and partners after the presentation. Please have coaches and families and other delegation members stay out of the award staging area, um, which will also be used to snow to stage snowshoe. It's going to be a little bit busier this year with both, but that also gives the opportunity for our snowshoeing athletes and spectators to also cheer on our alpine athletes and cheer our uh, spectators and vice versa. So it's gonna make for a really exciting experience in the award ceremonies. Um, for the uh, results, they'll be posted on the lockers of the McHenry Lodge located by the entrance under the main windows near the exit to the deck. So it'll be right where the athletes come in, um, will be where the awards are or the results are posted. Um, for the flow, those escorts will be bringing the athletes from the competition 
area to the awards uh, area. Coaches and our family may not take athletes to awards or anywhere else. We need to ensure the entire division arrives together so awards can move along efficiently and smoothly. Skis will be placed on the ski racks near the lodge and the escorts will check the athletes and divisions in. A coach or registered volunteer should be in the awards area to cheer on the athlete and take responsibility for that athlete or partner following the awards presentation. Coaches and other delegation volunteers are not permitted in the awards staging area unless specifically asked to come in by the awards director, Anna McCauley, or one of the awards volunteers. Please do not crowd around the entrance of the awards area. It only makes for a congested situation worse. We will have spectator seating as well as there'll be different areas throughout the McHenry Lodge um, during awards that you can stay a little bit further back, but not, um, we want to stay out of that staging area. Again, it's going to be congested. For the awards, the location of the presentation will be located in the McHenry Lodge under the main A-frame. It's kind of the center of the, um, the center of the room, and it looks out on the squirrel cage um, slope there. Um, the location of staging will be right inside the doors to the McHenry Lodge, entering from the outside deck, and that location uh, will be shared with snowshoeing, so please be patient. Um, there may be some times that our snowshoeing athletes may need to turn around and get their awards to go do another um, race kind of quicker than our alpine athletes, so please be patient if it seems that there might be a... Um, a doubling up of two snowshoe awards and then an alpine award. There's a method to the madness in making sure that all of our athletes get their opportunities to participate in all of their um, events. Yeah, we will have two award stands. Um, so it's not just one award stand. So um, hopefully that will help with uh, what Elizabeth was saying with some congestion there. But again, I can't emphasize that enough. You know, uh, we have one awards crew, which is veterans, which are veteran um, individuals know the process very well, um, but just depends on the flow of the competitions when when people will be coming in. So um, just again, as Elizabeth said, be patient. Um, we'll get through the awards if a situation does arise, as I think most of you know, um, where you have to go to another event without receiving an award, your next event takes priority. Um, we will get you the appropriate award for whatever event that you completed if you have to go out and leave for another event. So again, just be patient. Um, I think it'll run smoothly, but this is a first for this. So um, again, I have full faith in our awards volunteers and management team members, but just want to reiterate that. Back to you, Elizabeth. Um, so protest. Protest forums will be available upon request in the control center for head coaches only. Um, they must be filled out within 30 minutes following the posting of results or will be automatically denied. And the Alpine Committee will meet and address the protest and inform the head coaches of the decision. For the ski equipment and overnight storage, um, the rental forms, which um, were sent out, and I have a screenshot of what they look like, I believe, on the next slide or a following slide. Um, they re require a parent or guardian signature for minors. So if any of the athletes that you have are minors and you do not have that signature by a parent or guardian that is not attending, please get that sooner than later. Um, we want to make sure that everyone can get those rentals that needs them. Um, again, that email was sent via email on Friday from myself um, with a link to this email to this webinar. So um, if you think you didn't get it, go back, check your email on Friday. If you still didn't get it, you're more than welcome to send me an email and I can make sure you get it directly. It is also available on the coaches resource page as of this morning. Um, skis will be stored overnight in the lockers provided by WIS. Um, we do ask you do not take them to the hotel room and you will get that um, ski locker um, key probably around the time that the room is ready, around the time that you get your, um, your hotel key. So, and it will be helpful to label ski equipment for each competitor. So it's a little different, I know, than what was done at Whitetail, um, but it will be a locker per hotel room. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike and Steve. Yeah, uh, that's correct. Okay. So also keep that in mind. If you have two athletes with the same bag, make sure they're marked correctly in case they end up in the same room 
and in the same locker. Um, so this is the screenshot of the WISP waiver. Um, again, was sent uh, was sent Friday via email. Individuals who do not complete this required waiver and return it into WISP upon getting their rental equipment will be removed from the competition. For those individuals who do not need rental equipment, the waiver must be turned in upon check-in when arriving. Anyone not turning this form in will be removed from the competition. So this is their risk and liability as well as their, um, their rental forms. So it's two in one. So it looks like every athlete participating will need this form filled out. Um, and just speaking, putting my registration hat on for a moment. Um, please don't get creative. I know it might be easier to send electronic versions. Um, I think at this point, WISP wants hard copies. And so you sending us an electronic version means that we then have to print them. I I've got more important things to do that are <laughs> more focused on benefiting our athletes at Winter Games and printing the form. So please bring your hard copies with you. Okay, Alpine's rules, some clarifications. Um, if I misspeak with any of these, Matt and Kathy, please correct me, please chime in. Um, so the appropriate helmet um, for Alpine ski racing is required for all four runners and competitors in the official training competition for all ability levels that was covered. And we're looking for that silver sticker for all um, super, G I get it wrong which the, the two courses on the previous slide. Um, competitors must wear gloves and goggles, not sunglasses. Make sure those competitors are using their ski poles correctly. Um, competitors may finish a race on one, school, one ski after they've passed the last gate. Competitors may finish a race without skis if the skis are lost in the immediate vicinity of the finish line. And during the competition, all competitors and coaches must report to the Alpine staging area for each course for time trials and finals by the noted staging, staging time on the posted division sheet, any delay of the division may disqualify that athlete. Coaches are not permitted on the race course or in the starting area unless approved based on ski or accommodations. And uh, again, same, we go over it all the time, what coaching is and where coaching is appropriate and where it's not for the slalom and giant slalom races that will consist of two runs. Awards for each event will, two timed runs. Awards for each event will be based on the con combined times of those two runs for that event. In the slalom and super and giant slalom co uh, competitions, the start order for the second run is determined by reversing the finish order of the first run. Any athlete who is disqualified from the first run will be permitted to run a second run for a participation medal only. Only athletes officially completing those two runs are eligible for awards. Yeah, and I'll stress, I'll stress the point that even if an athlete does not have a successful first run, please have them go that second run. Um, it's benefiting them for the experience, uh, giving them more practice on the hills and preparing them for future events. So um, if they get disqualified on the first run, please have them go up there and do that second run as well. And we're still using 50th medal, so they're still going to get a medal on a ribbon. Um, so every I'm gonna clarify, I will clarify that it's not a it's not a medal on the ribbon, but it is a nice um, is a metal, metal pin. pin. Yes, yeah, the metal pin. And if you haven't seen our 50th anniversary medals and ribbons, they are really really nice. It's basically the same style they use at World Games and USA Games, so they're really really nice. Yeah. So first, second, third get that medal and then the remainders including participation will get a ribbon that goes around the neck with a pin a metal pin on it for clarifying um the super g race consists of two runs the first run is a practice run the second is the competition run and results are based on the time of the second competition run start order for both runs is fast it's the slowest based on those time trial results the glide and super glide competitions consist of one run each and competitors disqualified during a time trial will be placed in a heat with other disqualified competitors and will race in a competition for those participation awards only. 
Com uh, competitors may participate in slalom, giant slalom, super G, glide, super glide, or one unified event where offered. The glide and super glide are not intent are intent, sorry, they are intended for lower skilled competitors. A competitor in those events may not also register for a novice level. Competitors may participate in two, um, two individual events and one unified event. Um, gone through, everyone in GMS looks good. So we were set on that. The one minute rule. So during time trials and competition, if the competitor moves out of the general direction of the line of the course, whether that be falling, missing gate or losing a ski, anything like that, he or she shall have one minute from the time of the deviation to re-enter the course. A competitor who fall, fails to adhere to this one minute time or receives assistance of any kind shall be disqualified. For the novice level, you do get a two minute time frame, but multiple deviations during a time trial or competition may result in disqualification at the discretion of course officials. Um, some accommodations, um, as far as I know, there weren't any accommodations listed in one GMS in the comment section of any of our athletes. Um, I did check that when preparing these slides, um, but any of our athletes that are uh, hearing impaired, uh, find an escort who can communicate with the athlete if no one is available. Coach may serve as one of two escorts. They may assist the athlete to the staging area, movement to the start area, and movement to the start line. Um, the starter will look directly at the athlete when commencing the start commands, and the starter coach may do the following sign a smart start command in addition to saying it verbally, use hand symbols such as counting down fingers in addition to saying it verbally. Um, so keep this in mind, even if none of your athletes have it, if you see a coach being an assistant, it may be due to accommodations for that athlete. Um, other accommodations for visually impaired skiers, support by a coach will be allowed to ensure the safety of the skier. The level of assistance will be determined in advance by the Alpine jury chairperson. And in general, athletes with some vision can have a ski coach in front of them, but without verbal assistance. Yeah, but without verbal assistance, athletes with other limited vision may receive verbal assistance. So some on-snow tips, um, health preparedness. We are going to have our medical team, of course, as well as the WISP Ski Patrol as our main, um, our main medical on the snow. But we do want to make sure that the health pre preparation checklist um, is good to go so that all the athletes are cared for. So we wanna make sure the delegations, um, any athlete or delegation member who's taking medications has that supply full time that we are there and that they're taking it accurately. Um, wanna make sure we're using sunscreen and lip balm. We do know the reflection on the, the snow. Um, we wanna make sure everyone is uh, being taken care of. I know all the staff that work the Polar Bear Plunge, a lot of us got uh, wind burn, so keep that in mind and making sure that we're covered and lotioned on the cheeks, nose, and lip area that's kind of might not be protected or it's covered by a like gator-like um, uh, thing. For her clothing, we want to make sure we're warm, water-resistant clothes, hats, gloves, and socks, um, being able to add and subtract layers, um, due to possible large temperature swings. Um, also having the availability to possibly have more layers one day than the other because don't know what the difference in the weather is going to look like. Um, for the diet, we want to make sure everyone's eating a balanced diet, extra carbohydrates or any form of starch, fresh vegetables um, and fruit, make sure everyone's kind of energized. Um, don't want to be eating too much greasy fried fatty foods during the games, kind of making everyone sluggish. Um, liquids, making sure everyone is drinking their water, extra non-caffeinated fluid with their meals and during regular intervals at the sport specific venues. Um, for any special needs, coaches should know 
each of their athletes special needs for protective or special athletic equipment. Okay. So Elizabeth, some... Elizabeth, sorry to interrupt. There was a question and I just got clarification from Wisp. Um, and that's my fault for putting this in the slide deck. Um, but in regards to the, uh, the waiver slash equipment rental forms, um, and again, it was my uh, miscommunication, that is only for people who are renting equipment from WISP. So we'll change that information on, this, on the slide that said for those who aren't renting equipment um, needed to have that as well. So I just now called WISP, got clarification on that. So thank you for that question. Back to you. Okay. Yep. Um, so if there does happen to be an accident on the slope specifically um, during an event or during warm ups or anything like that, we want to make sure we are not removing equipment or moving the injured person unless they are in immediate danger. Um, we want to summon the medical team um, or ski patrol if we're on the mountain, provide as much information as possible. Um, so the name of the trail, the location of the athlete, the exact location on the trail, any primary um, information regarding the injured person. Um, move other athletes and people to a safe place on the trail. We want to obtain the name, address, and phone numbers of all witnesses. Wait for that ski patrol. And then once they're there, have um, they will um, have control of the situation. Stay with the other athletes and get them to safety to the, to the appropriate area. We want to make sure that we're reporting the accident to the chief medical person, um, as well as uh, any SOMD staff. So Melissa Anger, Mike, or Steve um, for Alpine specific. Um, do not volunteer any information or make statements to anyone. Why are we not working? Okay. Um, and finally, we're going to need to complete an accident report as thoroughly as possible. Um, those blank reports can be obtained from the medical team. I know a lot of our staff members also have them in our dance binders and things like that. So um, when you're notifying them, they may also provide one for you. Uh, but what was the weather? What was condition on the slope, et cetera? Um, the level of the athlete's abilities, all of these things are important in making sure that we're documenting this incident correctly. Okay, so for food services, all... I can take some of these to get that okay. off your plate. I know you probably need to <laughs> get a drink of water or whatever. Um, so yeah, food services. Um, the main thing there, as we okay. mentioned, is all the food meals will be okay. in the uh, McHenry Lodge. Uh, note that lunch and breakfast on Sunday is not provided by Special Olympics. The main thing here is that your credential will be your pass to get into the Special Olympics delegation line for your meals. There'll be a separate um, uh, line for uh, delegation members versus general public and families, etc. cetera. Um, so again, um, with the dance, we're just gonna need to flip that, that area. Um, as we always say, um, the uh, please clean up after yourselves, et cetera. Richard, I saw your question. Yeah, the waiver forms, the equipment rental form waivers will be submitted when you get your equipment uh, for those of you who are renting those. Um, the one other thing here is uh, as you communicate to families, families will not be able to eat with the delegation um, because of limited space there. Um, the the whole McHenry Lodge will be designated for delegation members uh, for dining. There will be a separate location for families if they go through the line that's designated for general public, but they'll be directed to a separate area. So please, please, please help us, help you, help everybody. If you see families, say you got to go through that other line, and then you guys are going to sit in a different location. There's no going to, there's not going to be any of this. We're setting up shop for three days in this on these couple tables. Um, it's just going to be limited. So really appreciate you um, helping us with that situation. But again, make sure you have your credential. Without that, you won't get a meal. Okay. Special events, we talked about the opening ceremony. Uh, you'll see the, the dance theme that just came in from Mr. Herman. Um, the theme of the dance is the Academy Awards, so glitz, glamour, uh, movie theme, whatever kind of thing, what that'll work for you. Uh, but that'll begin being the McHenry Lodge. 
We really, really, really do want to have as many people as possible there at the welcome back celebration um, leading into the opening ceremony. The Chamber of Commerce is there. Um, they've been working on this for a while and are just really excited to see everyone and thank you and welcome us back as a, as a special mixed Maryland family. So we really want to have as many people as possible in there um, from 7 to 730 to cheer on and thank them for having us back and all of their efforts within the community and make that a really good um, transition going into the opening ceremony. We talked about where the awards are going to be, so we'll go into the next one. Um, during the dance, um, and I guess, well, primarily during the dance, um, we have, a, uh, as with, we do with several other events, uh, for those individuals who need a quieter space, or have some um, um, sensitivity sensitivities with the noise. There will be a room available in the back corner of the McHenry Lodge. It's the Whispers Room. Um, that's the same place where if you had anybody who was selected to carry in your banner uh, for your delegation, we'll meet. Uh, but we'll have some board games and things of that nature for individuals to sit back there, relax, chill. It won't be a completely quiet room, but it will be quieter um, than the McHenry Lodge. Um, the other thing that to make mention here is due to the high ceilings and the huge space of the McHenry Lodge, we don't anticipate it being as loud as it has been in the past when we were at the hotel in um, Hagerstown. Um, one other point to note here is that although there is a swimming pool, it will not be available for Special Olympics use during our time there. Uh, families and spectators, um, uh, I can hit on some of this. Okay. So, um, again, spectators are on their own. There's no walking passes as we've had at Whitetail in the past. Um, again, as we talked about the visibility of the courses, um, where the families can eat and where they can't be. Um, but if there are any family members or spectators who are renting their own equipment from WISP, uh, they're more than happy to do so and more than welcome to do so. Um, but they need to be familiar and know that they won't be able to see or access those races on those trails here, the Roadrunner, Muskrat, and Wisp, as those will be closed for our competition. Um, families can go to the dance. Uh, we're not gonna uh, remove them from that. The reason we had done that in the past was um, due to the condensed space there, um, but we will ask them to kind of uh, step back and and be in the back corner of the of the uh, McHenry Lodge. Uh, there is a family hospitality um, plan for this year that will only be on Monday from about ten to three, um, and we can give you some more information on exactly where that'll be located um, on site. Uh, there will not be a family reception as we've had in the past, so just want everyone to be aware of that. Um, Let's see here. Uh, we have not, we do not have pullover ponchos. Um, I know Whitetail has prepared, has done that in the past, but I mean, Richard, I see your bummer about the family hospitality. No, no big ice cream Sunday for you this year, my friend. Um, but uh, we can look again, it's, it's up to delegation members and everybody else to be prepared for all types of weather, as we mentioned before. I'm not saying we won't have some, but we are not at the capacity right now to provide that for everybody. And I'm not sure WISP has that as well. Um, so, you know, spectators are able, if they want to bring some folding chairs out there at the base of the hill, um, we have not been said, we have not been told that they aren't able to do so. So one thing to just let them know if they want to do that, they can do that. Um, and that covers that slide. All right. And as soon as Elizabeth hits the next slide, I see you trying, Elizabeth. I see. Uh, you oh, there we go. I went too far. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, so again, with that family uh, hospitality area, um, that's not for athletes and partners. It's kind of for pretty much non-registered family members just to go hang out with other family members, um, have a space to get a refreshment, that kind of stuff. Uh, want to limit that to those individuals and not all the athletes and partners going up and getting refreshments. They they have their own places to get their meals and things of that nature. Um, but we do expect that to be in the Morris room, uh, but it will be there at uh, on West property uh, by the other event rooms, as, as we had mentioned earlier. Okay. Um, so as, as the question came in about ponchos, hey, we're always looking at the, at the conditions, not only from Matt and Kathy and Jared and the rest of the Alpine team on what courses and 
if there's any adaptations or changes that need to be made, but also on the outside conditions, mother nature, if you will. Um, if there are any course changes that need to be made, uh, Matt, Kathy, Jarrett, and the rest of the Alpine crew will be taking a look at those. Um, we'll be arriving on Saturday, but checking them on Sunday. If there are any changes to any of the courses that we've mentioned here, uh, coaches will be notified um, early afternoon on Sunday. We don't anticipate it, but you never know. Um, again, hydration, weather, be prepared for everything. Make sure you're hydrating as well as the athletes and partners yourselves. Um, thus, I pulled this up today. The forecast um, looks to be for the three days between 25 and 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, there is some chance of rain and snow both. So again, be prepared for all that. And you see the winds. Um, as Elizabeth talked about wind burn or whatever else, just make sure you've got some layers on and uh, we'll be prepared for those winds. Um, but again, layer, layer, layer. Um, we talked about the, the ski patrol, uh, mostly for Alpine on the Hill, will be the medical go-to people. We will have overnight medical on, on site, and we'll communicate that to the HODs. Um, but uh, emergency contacts, you can always call 911. Then you can call myself, Mike Sarnowski, who will be overnight emergency contacts, along with our on-site overnight medical, staying in one of the hotel rooms. Upcoming webinars, we've got the family and athlete webinar coming up uh, tomorrow um, at six. Um, it's going to, just so you guys know, it's going to be a lot of the same information. It's not going to go into all the details and the specifics for each sport, but it'll give some basic information um, that they need to know as far as schedules, family hospitality, meals, that kind of stuff. And then similar to our Alpine webinar tonight, we've got uh, snowshoeing coming up on Thursday. And then on Wednesday, just so everyone knows, we also have a games management team meeting. So uh, this this uh, week is a lot of a lot of late nights. Um, one of the things we always ask is the evaluation and getting feedback at the end of the event. Um, again, this will be posted on the resource page. We'll also send out reminders after the event. But please have anybody and everybody, whether it's a family member um, or just somebody coming from your delegation to support an athlete or a partner. Um, yourselves as coaches, assistant coaches, chaperones, we need feedback from everyone um, to make sure that if there's any corrections or changes that need to be made, we can do so, um, as well as we also want to know what went well or what you liked, so that if you liked it, we don't change it, um, and we continue doing what the things that you and the athletes and everybody else likes. So just be sure uh, to fill that out. Again, the, the more feedback we get, the better the management team, our staff, and, every, and others can prepare and continue to build on the successes of this event. Um, with that being said, um, again, no holds barred on the evaluation, but I will say, as I'm sure you each of you know, it, there's going to be some challenges um, with a new facility, um, new staff. We haven't been there in over 10 years. Um, some familiarity there, but again, as a coach, your leadership um, is what will dictate the success uh, for your athletes and partners. So if you see some things going wrong, don't get all frustrated and, and blow up or whatever. Just say, hey, you know, they're working on it. We'll get back to it. Um, no big deal. Um, as you know, athletes look to you and your responses and your leadership on how they respond, not just in Special Olympics and any, any kind of sporting event or any kind of coaching aspect. Um, we put the uh, Winter Games resource page here. I think Mike just told me that I, the Winter Games event guide is up and loaded. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mike. Uh, it is on the Winter Games page, not the individual sport pages. Gotcha. So, yeah, I think, uh, you know, you can go to our, uh, the where you see the first part there, somd.org, coaches resource, and then it has Winter Games. Um, and that's where you can see the event guide along with um, going to the Alpine specific where this will be posted for the webinar, et cetera. Um, as we always say, um, make sure you clean up your areas. Um, be respectful to the um, uh, housekeeping at the hotel. Uh, don't make messes in your rooms. They're going to have a huge turnover um, after our event to prepare for other guests coming in. The easier we can make it on them, the better as well as um, throughout the, when you're having meals or whatever, please, please, please clean up after yourselves. 
Um, we do a really good job here at Special Mix Maryland, um, respecting the venues. And they say, my gosh, I can't believe, you know, you guys are the cleanest group we've ever had. And it just shows the respect that we have for them and their property and that we can take care of ourselves. Um, remember to thank the volunteers. Um, you as coaches are volunteers, and, and I hope you know how much we appreciate what you do as coaches. And we thank you for all of your efforts uh, throughout the year, uh, depending on how many hats and coaching opportunities you have. Uh, but specifically for uh, preparing your athletes, your partners, and your other uh, delegation members for the Winter Games. Um, but as you know, uh, day of volunteers are coming just to hang out and be a part of the event. And uh, usually a simple, hey, thank you, means a lot to those individuals who are giving up their time uh, to create the experience and the competition for, for our uh, competitors. So, um, and don't forget, as we always did at Whitetail, um, also thank the WISP staff when you see them in their um, uniforms or their name tags or whatever. Um, to say, hey, I don't know who you are, but I see you work for WISP. Hey, we just we just thank you for having us. Um, just continues to build that friendship, that camaraderie, and that partnership um, that we at Special Olympics Maryland hold dearly, and, and we know you do as well. So with that. Um, I want to add just one quick thing about the evaluation. When I came on um, with staff, it, as staff, it really helped me. So please take your time to fill it out, especially with it being a new venue and myself being a new sports director, it helps me make sure that next season is even better and what can be controlled. Um, obviously, if if the weather is kind of shoddy, that's out of our control, we'll do our best. Um, but it, it really will help me um, making sure that next year's is as best as it can be. Anything with one snow or leading up to it, if you have any constructive, crit constructive crit criticism, please give it to me. Um, I can take it, I promise. And then I will, when I update the um, coaches resource page with the slides and recording of this webinar, I'll be sure that I upload the event guide there as well. So you're not having to go to too many pages for all that information. I'm making sure everything's updated on the Alpine page. I was in it this morning, like I said earlier. So making sure everything's there for you guys. So you're not having to go to too many different slide, too many different pages on our website. Good deal. Okay. I think the next one is just kind of maybe our sports director's contact information, or maybe it's just thank you. So yeah, additional resources, the rules, Special Olympics, um, and um, you, you've got all that here as well. Hopefully that's not news to you as well. Um, here's the list. If you have general questions, except for uh, Mr. Bird, um, if you have any other general questions about Winter Games, contact me. Um, snowshoeing is Ryan and then Alpine Elizabeth, but make sure you're copying Melissa Anger as well. Um, and um, again, on the next slide, as I mentioned, we really, really thank you. But before we get to that anymore, um, uh, Matt Otwell, anything that you would like to add um, from a leadership from the Alpine committee? If you're still on. Yep. I'm still here. Just want one minor note. I know there were some questions that came up in regards to exact locations on the trails. Uh, as we noted, uh, we had uh, st staff made a couple of trips up there. We had one of our longtime GM team members, Vicki Schlossnagel, who's been with uh, Special Olympics Alpine for 25 years. She is a uh, ski patroller at WISP. She's very familiar with the location, the terrain. And she attended both of the uh, site visits. We are going to be on Sunday morning when we set up for time trials. Uh, myself, Kathy, Jarrett, and Vicky are going to be inspecting all of the all of the trails to make final determinations. And uh, again, as always, conditions dictate where we may have to adjust or shift or things like that. So be patient with us. We're going to work through that as best as possible, given the conditions we have. That was it, Steve. Thank you. All right. Good deal, Matt. And again, I want to thank you for all your leadership with the Alpine Committee, um, your continued years of support with this as well. Um, and then, Kathy, anything you would like to add? Um, no, just looking forward to the weekend. I haven't been to WISP in a while myself. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Good deal. So um, Mike or Elizabeth, I didn't know if there's any questions that we didn't address in the chat. 
Um, but again, uh, uh, Richard's question about families going to the dance, I think, is the only one we had not addressed yet. Yeah, and again, we're not going to kick any families out, but really, um, you know, it, it's time for the athletes to be with their peers and whatever. Um, there will going to be some water and tea stands for some, for some hydration. Um, so just have family members um, kind of hang out in the back. But yeah, uh, it's a big enough area. Um, there will be tables and stuff in the back part of the McHenry Lodge to hang out. But that's primarily this is for the athletes, et cetera. Hey, Steve, I think there was a question from Mike Marin early in the presentation. I don't know if that got answered or not. Yeah, uh, yeah, actually, I answered it in the um, in the chat. Okay, thanks, Mike. Okay, unless, Mike, you need any further clarification, I, I'm, I'm hoping that answered your question. Could I ask Matt a quick question? Sure, Robert, go ahead. Yeah, so Matt answered my question about... Uh, using the magic carpet versus going all the way up. And I guess they've moved this side of the course for novice. But I guess my, my only concern with that is being patient with the novice skiers on their second run that they've got to go all the way up. It's going to take them some time to get down. And uh, at least the skiers that I saw that were doing the novice training, we didn't have any slopes that long or any practice for them to come down a slope that long at uh at whitetail so absolutely the course officials will be very patient they'll work with everybody as they as the athletes go through and get there for the first runs and the times and staging and things like that so we will absolutely work with everyone and again these are some of the uh dynamic changes that we're you know we're, we're very excited at, about at wisp we've been i don't want to say limited at whitetail there were ver various other options but i think this WISP does give us additional options for uh, all levels, including novice. And again, we may get up there Sunday morning. We may find possum is too thin. So again, we're going to, this is, this is our intent of what we're going into, and we will make sure we communicate any changes accordingly. Great. Thank you, Matt. You're welcome. Then Mr. Marin, just getting back to you, I'm, I'm assuming that, uh, Sarnowski, Mike Sarnowski's question to your partner events was significant or was sufficient. Or Rachel or whoever asked that question. <laughs> um, I'm going to assume uh, that if there's no response that it did answer it. So Mike, Mike can certainly advocate for himself if that didn't. So. Yeah, for sure. So um, I do see one comment about Harford County having two hearing impaired um, ASL users. Um, if you have any, um, if any other delegations have it, if you can email me with those athletes' names so I can add it as a comment directly into their games profile to make sure that that is communicated across the board throughout games. I do know of a couple that I've come in contact with during one snow. Um, but some of our volunteers might not have that communicated the same way. And I want to make sure that that's being communicated accurately across um, everything. Uh, I've got a question. Uh, Mr. Bird, hold, hold please. Um, okay. Question, we had another question come in. As far as um, family discounts um, for uh, skiing or whatever at this time, there is none. Um, so they'll be considered general public at WISP. So appreciate that question. Mr. Bird, you have the floor now, sir. Okay, yeah. So I guess one of the major question is, so uh, do I understand that there is no sign language interpreter, not even for opening ceremony? Nobody, we didn't, I didn't say it soon enough to. No, no, no. We, we, we do have plans to have a, an interpreter for the opening yeah. ceremony. Yeah, I just want to make sure it's communicated on like the heat sheets and stuff like that to the volunteers is what I'm um, uh, communicating. And yes, these slides will be available um, on the coaches resource page and emailed out, if not tomorrow, um, early Wednesday. I know um, a lot of us are up here in Snow Hill on the Eastern Shore for um, an IUS tournament. So that's um, going 
going to be taking up a majority of the day tomorrow, and some of us won't have access to our computers. But if it's not done tomorrow, it'll be for first thing on my list Wednesday morning. Yeah, and the, the checkout um, no later than 11 on Tuesday. If you can do that earlier, the better. We are working to have some luggage storage areas, if not one or two rooms per delegation to kind of hold that um, if you have a large delegation. So, but yeah, the sooner we can check out the later, but no later than 11 is is our scheduled time frame, except if we're able to uh, provide you a couple rooms per your delegation to hold on to all the luggage um, for late checkout, if you will. Other than that, we we really hope this this provided you some good information. Um, appreciate the feedback. Appreciate the questions. Appreciate everything you guys have done um, on snow, dry land, getting people up to uh, the other resorts, whether it's Liberty or Round Top or wherever you've gone out at Wisp, et cetera. So um, really looking forward to a great Winter Games, new place, new experience all under one roof. It will have a different atmosphere and hopefully a better atmosphere. Um, it was great at Wisp or at Whitetail, but I know there was a little bit of a going back to hotels and the meals there and then the dance. Um, this, this will have a little bit more camaraderie, I think. But um, uh, again, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you have any questions in the meantime, don't hesitate to ask Melissa Anger and Elizabeth Kramer, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Continue to check the coaches resource page. Thank you everyone for hanging in there for a couple extra minutes tonight. We hope you found it beneficial. Hey, thank you. Good night, everyone.